Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Bitcoin logarithmic regression, the accumulation corridor. So if you guys like the content, please subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. Let's go ahead and jump in. So when it comes to Bitcoin, we, you know, we've historically spent a lot of time looking at these regression lines. Uh, I like to do, I like to give an update on these regression lines, just a dedicated video outside of trading view where I just have my own custom charts and we, we talk through some of the long-term macroscopic moves. Uh, typically I, I like to do this about once a month where we just do a, a standalone video on, on Bitcoin logarithmic regression. So with that said, what we're going to do is, is we're just going to be identifying for new people, uh, where is this accumulation corridor? And you can see that we have two regression lines, right? We have the one down here, the green regression line. This is fit to quote unquote non-bubble data. And then we also have the upper regression line, which is fit to the peak data. And you can see that over the macro scale, they do appear to be converging. And we would expect this because we've, we've, we recognize that macro level volatility is decreasing. Um, and one of the things we've also talked about besides these regression lines are these other regression bands that we've looked at and recognizing that you can, you can pretty clearly see these accumulation zones from cycle one to cycle two to cycle three, and now we're currently in cycle four. And we might assume that we, we, we must always assume that, that short term bubbles are a thing and that they can happen. Um, we've had several of them. In addition to having macroscopic bubbles like these three, we've also had several short term bubbles where we, we have a pretty significant increase, but then we come back down either to the regression line or a pretty significant correction, right? This was a pretty significant correction. And then we had a, a pretty uh, a significant short-term bubble here that took us back down to the regression line. We had one in 2019, we peaked at 14K back to the regression line. We've recently just come above our fair value regression line. And if we were to do something like go to the purple line, which is what we did in 2019, we recognize that these are monotonically increasing. And if it were to go to the purple line, it might look something like that, which would take Bitcoin to over $30,000. This would be if we were to have a, a similar type uh, bubble like we saw in 2019. And remember, when we talk about these bubbles, we're talking about micro bubbles, not the macro bubble that should theoretically pop somewhere in the upper regression band, the red band. I, I, I contend it will take longer for us to get there um, uh, than just a quick move up and then back down. And if we were to move up in the short term, which there is always a possibility that we do, if we were to go up to the upper regression band in the short term, then it would most likely be capped lower than $100,000 if history is any indication of the ROI that we might expect. It, it probably would come in at less than 100 grand if in fact we were to go up to the upper regression band, say in 2021. If on the other hand, we do uh, you know, we, it takes us longer and, and lengthening cycle theory is true then, and we come up to the regression band later, say 20, late 2022, 2023, sometime like that, then I could easily see Bitcoin over, over six figures, um, maybe between 100 to $200,000. So keep that in mind. But what we really want to focus on for, for new people to the channel before we get into this is, is basically looking at this accumulation corridor and recognizing the opportunity when it's there. Because when we're there, when we're in the accumulation corridor, people tend to be pretty bearish on Bitcoin, not all the time, especially, you know, especially after it's been going up a while. But when you get these phases where we have these capitulations to the fair value, capitulation to the fair value with a, with a dip briefly, um, all the way down to the bottom of the regression line, right? This stuff is normal. A lot of people don't really tune in as much when we're at these levels but this is where the money's made. And if you guys remember, we made a lot of videos during this time period when we were in the accumulation corridor and saying that bull markets can make you rich, or sorry, bull markets, sorry, I completely botched the quote. Bull markets can make you money, but bear markets can make you rich. Because in a bull market, right, like at a time like this, if you're, if you're throwing money at 
um, you know, some cryptocurrencies and, and Bitcoin's doing well and these and we have like an altcoin season or something, you know, you, you could stand to make it a decent amount of money. Of course, I, I would recommend really researching each project you invest in. Don't do what some people do and tell you to throw money at the projects before investing in them. Um, but when you, you know, when you think about when you think about buying Bitcoin at 20K, which is what a lot of newcomers are having to face face, are they, you know, if they don't own any Bitcoin, do they come in at 19K? Um, and if they do, the, the problem with coming in at 20K or, or so is that even if Bitcoin would go to fi- uh, 100 grand, that's a 5X. Now, as far as traditional markets are concerned, 5X is a lot. Um, for equities in general, 5X is a lot. Don't tell that to Tesla, but in general, a 5x move over a few years would be a pretty significant move. However, for the people that were buying Bitcoin at $4,000, they're already up almost 5x. So if it were to go another 5x from here, then they're up 25x. So this is what we mean when we say bull markets can make you money, but bear markets can make you rich. So if you find yourself ever again, when we're in, if you find yourself with you know and, and you're and you're looking at the crypto markets and you find bitcoin back in the accumulation corridor recognize the opportunity that's there and if we come back to the top of it i would say that's a, a pretty good opportunity and if we were to dump there down to the bottom even a better opportunity right we we, we fluctuate between these bands we don't know exactly how, how far down it's going to go but i think it's still important to recognize the opportunity when it's there and as, you know, if, if you look at my channel, we've been talking about that for over a year and a half about, about a year and a half that this is the time to accumulate Bitcoin. Like get prepared for the market cycle. Now I contend that there will still be plenty of, of time for accumulation, uh, at least part of the way into 2021. If you've watched the channel long enough, if you watched it back in say 2019, we said that 2019, 2020, and at least probably the first half of 2021 will be the accumulation zone. In 2019, we briefly left the accumulation zone, and right now in 2020, we have re-left, we've, we've left the accumulation zone. Um, I think there's a, a chance we come back into the accumulation zone, and one thing you have to recognize too is that even at the current price, if Bitcoin were to just go sideways for a, a, a number of months, we would, we would probably re-enter the accumulation zone as defined by the regression channel, as defined by the, the, um, the accumulation window. Um, and so this is, this is what you need to recognize. It does not precipitate, a, 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 a price drop is not necessarily needed to get back into the accumulation window. It could just mean that we go sideways for a few months to get back in the accumulation window. And yes, that still means that Bitcoin's at 20K and it goes to 100K and you're buying it at 20K, a 5X or a move to 100K would only be 5X. Um, But I think going sideways at 20K would at least provide a little people a little bit more confidence um, in Bitcoin, right? I mean, when it's up, when it's up 100% in two months, it, it does seem very risky. If it were to go sideways for, you know, a number of months at this level, uh, of course, some people might call it a distribution phase. In that event, we would probably call it a reaccumulation phase. Um, do I think it's going to go sideways at 20k? Uh, probably not. It'll it'll probably either um, hold resistance at it and and come back down. Maybe test the 20-week moving average at some point, or we'll have another surge, go above 20k, maybe up to 25k, and then have a correction. Um, but we'll see what happens. We'll, we'll see what happens. Make sure you subscribe to be here every step of the way. And before we continue the video, I want to remind you that we do have the Black Friday sale going on still. It's been pretty popular, so make sure you sign up for that. You can find a link to that in the description below. You'll get access to weekly reports, weekly videos, a risk dashboard, which is what I use to, to trade. Um, this is not day trading, of course. This is more momentum shift training, trading in the market. Um, also the Telegram Alerts channel, the Telegram chat room, and you'll also get access to these indicators in TradingView. So make sure you check out the Black Friday deal in the description below and make sure you subscribe to the channel. Let's get to 70,000 subscribers. So if you're new, which I know a lot of you are based on my subscriber count recently, then we need to recognize that this there is a, a much higher risk in purchasing Bitcoin at this level 
than there was a while back, right? I mean, I, I was sounding like our broken record back here saying accumulation time, accumulation time, accumulation time. Um, but now when we're out of the accumulation zone, as I said back over here, there's going, where there's going to come a day where we exit the accumulation zone and people are going to look back and wish they had bought more. And I, I think that's pretty much where we find ourselves because there's so many people saying, you know, I bought Bitcoin at 19.5 or I bought it at, you know, at, at 19K, uh, you know, what's it going to do next? And the thing, the thing is, for people who have been buying it for a while, it doesn't really matter as much because even if it were to drop, say, 30%, it's up so much recently that you know any of these people that were accumulating it at four thousand, five thousand, six thousand, ten thousand dollars could easily stomach that type of a move. But if you just got in, then it might not be easy to stomach because you might feel like you're getting trapped. You you bought in at nineteen five, and you're just constantly watching the screen to see if it can get back to nineteen five, and then when it gets to nineteen five, you're just you get elated and you're and you're waiting for it to go over twenty k. And then if it doesn't, it goes back down and you feel trapped again. And it's just not a fun place to be. So if you find yourself in that position, um, I, I would just recognize that the, the short-term ROI is a complete toss-up as to whether it's going to be a good move. But the macro-level ROI, in terms of looking at, say, a multi-year time frame, I think, I think you're going to do fairly well. And what I would say is use this as an opportunity to, to, you know, to watch the markets and and if we and if you are fortunate and we come back down into the accumulation corridor then recognize it for the opportunity that it is because though you know there's going to be a lot of bears at the time if it happens uh especially if it happens in the short term uh, but if it does happen just recognize it for the opportunity that it is so i just wanted to remind you these were the, the lows and the highs from the prior cycles and we can look at, you know, this is a 589x move, 122x, this ratio is 0.207, a very dubious extrapolation. If we were to do another 0.207, that would put us at a 25x move from the bottom, a 3166, and put us at an $80,000 Bitcoin. However, it would be somewhat dubious to assume that this ratio would decrease at, or, or be the same, a constant. In fact, it'd probably be higher because we know that macro volatility, it's not going to, um, it's not going to go, you know, 0.2 forever uh, because we know that volatility is is decreasing and so we would expect it to be um, as measured from say you know the bottom to the top uh, I don't think it's going to be quite as substantial so I mean even if it were like 0 0.3 0 0.4 it could easily get us to um, you know a hundred thousand dollar Bitcoin if that was the the, the ratio uh, between this one and then the next one because then it might be like you know like a 40x move which would be 120k Bitcoin so just recognize, you know, these what we would expect diminishing returns. And if if you do find yourself in the position one day where you own a lot of Bitcoin and Bitcoin's trading at several multiples from what you bought it at, just remember um, these times are short lived when it when it gets to those levels, when it gets to these upper levels, they can last a few weeks. So it can be tricky. You know, you might sell it and then you watch it go up another 20, 30 percent the next day. And this is why we always talk about dynamic DCA sell sell right dynamic dca your cells uh, because we don't we don't know where the top is we, we must recognize we don't know where the top is and therefore we just do it dynamically and that means selling more as the risk goes up selling higher amounts of bitcoin as the risk goes up so that you save the most of it uh for the for the very top or close as close to the very top as you can get if it in fact makes it there and on the other hand, if you just have a short-term bubble that doesn't make it anywhere close to the top, it gives you the chance to take profits in the in the intermediate time frame, and then reinvest it if it comes back into the accumulation corridor. So this is the regression. These are the regression lines extended out for a couple decades. Um, one thing we have to recognize is that these regression lines need to be refit each market cycle. So after the next market cycle, we will refit them. And what's, what will happen is they will, they will bend over more. Um, they will fall over more. They won't be quite as aggressive uh, because if you say you only fit the data to say this or the curve to this data, it would go up a lot quicker. Each market cycle, because we are seeing you know, significantly diminishing ROI, um, after the next one, and we get to the bear market and we refit it, then these will probably be lower than they are now. So while it may appear that we could theoretically get to a million dollar Bitcoin by early 2030s, maybe 2031. I would contend that, that would be very a, a very liberal estimate and that something more likely to happen 
is to see uh, you know a one hundred to two hundred thousand dollar Bitcoin during the next market cycle, probably closer to one than probably closer to one hundred than two hundred if I had to guess. But again, I don't really know. It's just a guess. It depends on how long it takes us to get there. And then the next cycle, I would I would imagine probably between three hundred to five hundred thousand dollar Bitcoin if in fact we we continue this trend. This is but this is just if we continue the trend, not it has to go to this. Place. It has to go to this price. Nothing like that. It's just simply if the trend continues, and then following that, I would I would speculate. You know, a million dollar Bitcoin, maybe in the 2040s, early 2040s, if this trend were to continue, um, where we would essentially see these you know diminishing ROIs and and lengthening cycles. So we'll see what happens, right? But you can see that if this if it does go how I think, which it probably won't to some degree. Remember, all models are wrong. Some are useful, but if it does go somewhat related to how I think, then it could correspond to seeing a one hundred to two hundred thousand dollar Bitcoin in in a few years, three hundred to five hundred maybe in the early twenty thirties, and a million dollar Bitcoin in the early twenty forties. And I kind of I drew these pretty smoothly, but we recognize that there's nothing you know this smooth about the price of Bitcoin. There would likely be a lot of micro bubbles in here as well. And we want to take advantage of every micro bubble, right? Never let a micro bubble or any bubble go to waste. Recognize we don't know how high it will go. We don't know where the bottom is, but we can at least try our best to time it and, and then look back and see how good of a job we did. So that'll wrap it up for the video. If you guys like the content, remember to subscribe to the channel. Uh, let's get to 70,000 subscribers. Give the video a thumbs up. We also have the Black Friday sale going on, so make sure you check that out if you want access to the exclusive content. It'll go on for a little bit longer. I haven't decided an exact date yet, uh, but it will end sometime soon. And then make sure you, you turn on your alerts if, if you want to be uh, notified of future videos. That'll wrap it up for the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will see you next time. Bye.